All rise. I want viewers watching my show to believe in themselves. Judge Hatchet is compelling. I was not the first one to throw a walk. Let me just tell you what you just said. Compassionate. I really enjoy being a judge. Now I am touching people who I will never know I touch. She's powerful. You should have never let them walk out of your life when she was three. And she's on the bench. Don't get me preaching up in here today. Right. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchet. Bridget and Daniel Epsom are suing Mark Aquina in the amount of $1,200. Mr. Epson claims Mr. Aquina disrupted his marriage after the talent scout offered his wife false promises of a successful music career. All rise. Court is now in session with the Honorable Judge Hatchett presiding. Very honor. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Good day. You all are a married couple. Yes. And you are suing the defendant because you said that he interfered with your marriage to your wife. Is that right? Yes. Oh, there must be an interesting story to this. So, who wants to begin? You want to tell me what's happening? Well, basically, um, before I got married, I had a career as a wedding planner and I was a part-time musician. Um, music was always my dream. All right. And after I got married, my life changed. Um, my husband makes a lot of money, so I didn't need to work. Okay. And for the first year, it was fine. And then I did, like, I wanted to go back to my music career. Right. But I didn't feel the support that I needed from my husband. All right, so the two of you, I would hope this was a joint decision, the two of you decided that you would be at, at at home, wife, and did you ever talk to your husband about the fact that you perhaps were not feeling fulfilled, that you missed working and you missed your music career? Did yes, you all I have did. that conversation? Yes, we did. Um, and how did he respond? He didn't think I had the ability to make it as a singer, songwriter. So you didn't believe in her talents or her ability to be in the music industry, Daniel? I, it's not that I didn't believe in her. I just told her, look, it's a very competitive business, and that it would probably it probably w wouldn't be worth it. <clears throat> so basically, you weren't supported. I mean, let's just be honest. Let's keep it real. Okay. I mean, why Amazing. you know why get around all this? I mean, that's what we need to do. We need to be honest. So how do you all know the defendant? He was at a baseball game that I took my wife out on, and um, he was basically flirting with her the whole time. So he was sitting next to you? He was sitting on my left. My husband was on my right. Okay. And we just started talking. And he told me he was a talent manager. I told him I was a musician. We had a lot of common interests, and that's what it was. And I understand yeah. from the complaint that there was a kiss cam? Yes. yes you know, sure. Everybody understand what a kiss cam is? And so what happens? Let me hear from you, Mark. You're sitting at the game. You're sitting yes. at the baseball game. These are strangers. You didn't know them. Yes. And you all struck up a conversation. Now, tell me about this kiss cam situation. Yes, well, I'm a native to, to Hawaii, and you know, I'm a talent scout. So when I see people, I just engage in conversation because that's the nature of my job. Mm -hmm. But when the kiss cam comes up, uh, it zoomed in on us, and I, I guess they assumed that we were uh, a, a couple. couple because of our age similarity. And what happened when the kiss cam zoomed in? Oh, nothing, nothing. nothing? It was just created an awkward and awkward contentious situation, moment. But yes. no kissing? No kiss. Oh, come no. on. I'm hoping not. No. All right, so that's that an way. awkward situation. So now the two of you all are up on the Jumbotron. And what was your reaction, Daniel? Uh, I felt embarrassed. Ah. And how did you feel about this, Bridget? <laughs> it was probably one of the most awkward moments in my life. Oh, wow. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> All right, so now, you talked about being a talent agent? Yes. To Bridget, so tell me about that conversation. Oh, well, um, I heard about her interest and what she did, in a, uh, you know, back in the day, and I told her what I could possibly do for her career because I have a studio in my home. So what happens next? What happens next is we basically swap information. All right. So that we could... Is this meet. after the kiss camp? Yeah. It was wow, after the kiss came. Because the conversation continued because her husband wasn't engaging her. And I wasn't there f to flirt with her, but these are the people that are sitting next to me. This man, he was inappropriate. 
during certain times of the game. How was he inappropriate? Well, he was, he got a little close to her from time to time and I didn't really want to get too involved because it seemed very important. It seemed very important to Bridget. Yeah. So now, fast forward, you all leave the baseball game, you've exchanged information. What happens next, Bridget? Well, then the next day he called me and he told me that he has a studio um, and he would like me to record some songs with him. Mm -hmm. um, so then a couple of days later, I went to his studio and we were just talking and brainstorming mm -hmm. and, you know, at this point, like, I wasn't getting any support from my husband, so meeting somebody who believes in you, in your talent, in your dream, that was very, very important to me. So let me stop you right there, Bridget. Did you tell your husband you were going over to his studio that happened to be in his home? No. I told him that I was going to the studio, but I didn't tell him that it was in his home. So you tell him you're going to the studio. What was his reaction? He didn't like it. He didn't he like it. He thought it was a bad idea. Coming up on The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. What did Daniel have been sitting next to you? I would have engaged anyone next to me. Oh, okay. It's the nature of the business. Did you engage somebody on the other side of you? No. Okay, yes, all right. And later. How did he violate your lease? He turned it into a business. He started what? to run a business out of the place. Was this what not What kind around? of business? Uh, I came to learn that it was making jam. Closed captioning provided by. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Bridget and Daniel Epsom, who are suing Mark Aquina for $1,200. She's at the studio. What have you agreed to do? In terms I, of being a talent agent, did you all have a contract? It, what, what were you going to do? I agreed to basically help her, brainstorm with her, work with her in the studio, and basically leading to an EP, which is a six, you know, six track song, almost like passing around a business card. What was the financial arrangement between you, if any? Um, I would basically front everything from what? dinners to recording sessions because studio electricity is very high. So you're going to so, front all the costs? Yes. Now, at that point, you had never heard her sing. I mean, she's sitting at the baseball game. You had never heard her sing or perform, yes? Yes. And how did you know she was talented? I just took a uh, chance. You, oh, you just took a chance. I just took a chance. <laughs> <laughs> and you had no motives to be involved with her? No. Romantically? No. None? No. What if Daniel had been sitting next to you and Bridget had been sitting in the other seat? What would have happened? I would have engaged anyone next to me. Oh, okay. It's the nature of the business. Did you engage somebody on the other side of you? No. Okay, yes, no. all right. <laughs> now we're at no. the studio. You're fronting all the costs. Are you all making a demo reel? You're yeah, but I just want to add that he promised me a lot of things that he didn't deliver. So tell me what he promised you. So basically, he promised me that he would get me into clubs and bars on a weekly basis. That never happened. Did you make that promise? Um, I told her I would submit things. I never heard back from producers and okay. club But did you owners. submit, did you submit I things? I did. All yes, right, sure. so you all recorded this demo and you we had something did. to submit. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so you're saying that you tried but you didn't get good responses. What right. else did he promise? He basically said, and this is what his words, I'm going to make you a star. You're going to be a star. Yes, I said that, Your Honor, because after the first session, I knew for sure that she was talented. But, you know, there are no guarantees in that type of industry. Did you say that to her? I did. Did he say that to you? There are no guarantees in this industry? I don't remember that. But you've been in this business long enough to know that there are no guarantees, yes? yes? but I also know that talent agents know people and they can introduce you to people, which he never did. Still no guarantees. Still no guarantees. So this goes on and on and on. For how long? How long did this go on? Eight months. Eight months? Yeah. yeah. All right, so during this eight months, Bridget, you're saying that he didn't give you, he didn't book you at any engagements. Nothing, Nothing at came all. of it. Nothing at all. But you kept going on and on and on because for eight months. Because I just wanted to believe that it was going to happen at some point, and he just kept name dropping. He was like, I know so and so, and this person, and that person. 
I'm, I'm going to introduce you to this person. That was the reason we started going to dinners. Like, he would take me well, to dinner. Well, that's what I was, I'm so glad you raised that, because that was going to be my next question. If you're so busy trying to get these engagements and you're in the studio doing this demo, how is it that you were having dinner with him? Uh, well, we were recording during the day, and then we would go have dinner in the evening. And he said he would introduce me to people who go to those restaurants, but that never happened. She definitely met people. I don't know if she remembers or not, but she definitely met people. So the dinners were to introduce her to people? Yes. At a very popular Hawaiian spot that a lot of celebrities go to, and I definitely... All right, so let's get entered. down to the bottom line in this case. How are you all doing now? Better. Better? Better, yeah. yeah. And where does, how did you come up with the $1,200 claim? What is that based on? Daniel? It's based on the fact that my wife and I had to go through intensive therapy to uh, get all this resolved. All right, I'm going to rule on this case. Let me just say a few things. Whether you admit it or not, your marriage is in trouble before you went to the baseball game and met Mark. Do I think that Mark exasperated the problems? Absolutely, I do, I do. Do I think he probably sensed that you were vulnerable and that you really were needy and you needed some stuff that you weren't getting in your marriage? I think he sensed that. But to come into my courtroom today and say, Daniel, that he should be responsible for this therapy and these bills that you accumulated because of therapy for $1,200, I'm not gonna award you any money. Because you all needed to be in therapy. You all needed to be in therapy. And I think maybe you still need to be in therapy. If there's nothing further, I'm dismissing your claims for the reasons I've stated. We'll stand adjourned. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been dismissed. I still feel like you took an advantage of me. I was just trying to help you. Your marriage problems were there long before me. Coming up. How did he violate your lease? He's turned it into a business. He started what? to run a business out of the place. Was this what not What kind around. of business? Uh, I came to learn that it was making jam. Closed captioning provided by. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Sam Larson is suing Robert Brown in the amount of $2,000. Mr. Larson claims his former landlord unfairly kept his security deposit and says Mr. Brown is just upset that he was operating a home-based business. Mr. Brown, I understand that your former tenant is suing you for $2,000. That's Because correct. he wants his security deposit back, is that right? Yes, Your Honor. All right, well, tell me the backstory. What happened? I rented the place to this young man thinking he was an upstanding fellow, and he violated the lease. How did he well, violate your lease? He turned it into a business. He started what, to run a business out of the place. Was this not around? What kind of business? Uh, I came to learn that it was making jam. All right, so Mr. Brown, you then gave him notice that he should stop running the business. I did, Your Honor. Do you have reason to believe that he did not stop running the business? Yes, Your Honor. How so? Tell me. I witnessed someone removing stuff that did not look like furniture or clothing from his place. <laughs> so I automatically assumed that he's still running his business. Did you confront him about that? Exactly, I did, Your Honor, and I gave him a notice that he had three days to vacate. Okay, so this is the second notice. You gave second him notice. three days to vacate, and what happened? Did you vacate the apartment? Of course, Your Honor. I was actually tired of him and tired of living there myself. So I've actually wanted to get out of there already. And so I understand that the, you're keeping the $2,000 deposit. Is that right? It's a security deposit? Yes, Your Honor. And why? Because you're claiming some damage to the apartment. Yes, Your Honor. All right. So do you have proof that there was damage to the apartment? Yes, Your Honor. May I see that, please? Your Honor, this is a $50 job. I can fix it myself. Coming up. You didn't obey by the terms of the lease. Right? You do admit that you were running a business. I do admit, Your Honor. At first, I did not go forth with the terms of the lease, but after the first warning, I did stop. Closed captioning provided by... You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. 
The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Sam Larson, who is suing Robert Brown for the return of a security deposit. So tell me what I'm looking at, Mr. Brown. You're looking at paint stains on the wall and a crack in the uh, countertop. So you, you know that this doesn't cost $2,000 to fix? I, I have no, I, I, I hire contractors. I, I'm not a contractor. I can only call someone in to look for the stuff and they can tell me how much it costs. I do not know per se. Your yes. Honor, may I say something please? please? My dad is actually a contractor. This is a $600 job at the most. So let me ask you this. You didn't obey by the terms of the lease. Right? You do admit that you were running a business. I do admit, Your Honor. At first, I did not go forth with the t terms of the lease, but after the first warning, I did stop. So, but you continue to store products, and Mr. Brown says that he saw things being taken in and out of the apartment that didn't look like clothes or furniture. So, part of the apartment was used to support your business. In some way, yes, Your Honor. Yes, in some ways, yes. Which means that Mr. Brown, your landlord, was in within his rights to say, you know, this is a second warning and you've got to leave. Judge Hatchett's verdict when we return. Promotional consideration provided by. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Now, Mr. Brown, this is not $2,000 worth of damage to this apartment. I haven't. Your Honor, I have an estimate. Oh, uh, let me see that estimate. Okay. Uh, now you have to it, understand. It doesn't average up to two. It's not up to two thousand dollars, though. It's not. Uh huh. Okay. okay. I'm glad you said that before I looked at it. No. <laughs> oh, come on, Mr. Brown. Come on. Hey, th that's the first estimate. It, it, uh, th whenever you do construction, there's always overruns. So I. I think I should be justified in holding on to the whole 2000 until the whole com job is absolutely completed. Let because me tell you. No telling there is a paint stain yes. and a crack in a countertop, right? Yes. My grandfather was a contractor. Mm -hmm. So I know a little bit about what I'm saying, all right? Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Brown, um, he shouldn't have been operating the business on the property. He violated the lease. I think mm -hmm. there should be some adjustment for that. Uh, is he going to get his $2,000 uh, back um, in total? No. Um, but I do think that equity requires that he get some of this back. And so I'm going to award the plaintiff $750. Thank you. Yes, $750. But let this be a lesson to you. You should comply with the terms of the lease. And Mr. Brown, we need to be, we need to find a new contractor because this is just, I mean, this is extortion here. $1,300 for a crack and a paint stain. My goodness. All right, there's nothing further. We will stand adjourned. Thank you. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $750. I am sorry I was wrong to run a business. I understand. Be better next time. This has been a production of Entertainment Studios.